Excerpt 7, in which Rail Runner and Merry Legs indulge in blood play. Blood and saliva dripped like a faucet from its mouth. The thing must have bitten Merry Legs because she had a nasty wound on her leg. With tears of pain in her eyes, she screamed in defeat. Are you all right? I said, rushing to her aid. My leg! Oh! She moaned. Rail runner! I can get the blood off and wrap it up for you! Do it! Lick the shit off and wrap it! Please! She said, with tears running down her face. My forked tongue ran over her wound. I hated to taste her blood, blood of the good. I liked the blood of the enemy. I wanted to taste it so bad, especially freak shows, but even more, iron wheels. Excerpt 8, in which Rail Runner throws a tantrum and threatens to kill Merry Legs. Rail Runner then roared the biggest earth-shattering roar I'd ever heard. Thunderbolt couldn't even top it. His roar echoed all through amusement park between. Powerful sounding. Threatening. His mouth was completely open, showing all of his razor teeth. The thought of them going into me made me sick to my stomach. Railrunner's roar then died into a whine. Railrunner, I said in the most common voice I could muster. Go away, Merry Legs! Railrunner growled. You're being a jerk, I said to him without thinking. I saw him start to tremble again, trembling in anger, so ready to kill me. I waited for the roller coaster's teeth to rip out my throat. I still wasn't finished speaking my mind, so I continued. Why are you being such a hothead? Railrunner, you have an anger management problem. He snorted in disgust, and gave me a threatening grimace. I didn't ask for any of this, Claire! <laughs> he retorted. My eyes widened. Then he realized what he had said and hung his head in defeat. Then there was nothing but an awkward silence between us. Excerpt 9, in which Miranda Leek compares herself to the immortal bard of Yvonne! There was an awkward silence between us for several brief moments. Then Mary Legs spoke up again. You miss her, don't you? I looked at Mary Legs. Her eyes were full of worry. How can you tell? Well, <laughs> just kind of noticeable, she said. Slightly embarrassed. <sighs> I do miss her a lot. I thought of a strange reference, but it could possibly help Mary Legs understand more. Do you know the story of Romeo and Juliet? Yes, I read it during our time in the real world. Well, at the very beginning, in the prologue, William Shakespeare calls the story The Tale of the Star-Crossed Lovers. I and Claire's love is very similar, forbidden by forces that neither of us can deny. William Shakespeare! 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 Excerpt 10, in which Miranda Leek works out her teenage rebellion issues. Thunderbark laid a wheel firmly on my chest and glared into my eyes with solid anger. You have got to be the dumbest roller coaster I've ever met. He hissed. What the hell is your problem, Thunderbark? My problem? My problem is I'm tired of you being a smartass. All you ever do is drink. You choose to do the stupidest of decisions. Shut up, Thunderbark! I retorted. No. The stunt you pulled back there delayed us and put every innocent human in danger. <laughs> for, for your information, I was even clear! It is not my fault that we got caught up in this situation! 
I yelled at him. My wheels were trembling in anger. I tried to walk away to cool off, but Thundermark started it up again. You know, Railrunner, I sometimes wonder how you got to be so stubborn. <laughs> Why don't you ask the guy that activated me? After all, he knew me ever since I was born! I screamed back at him. I'm tired of you acting this way. He roared. I should have left your ass right in that cell! I snarled. Maybe. I turned around to face him again, a lump in my throat formed as I prepared to yell again. I don't know what you and Myra was thinking when she made you my godfire, cause you sure aren't one! Excerpt 11, in which Railrunner and Claire have sex without intercourse. <laughs> Claire simply giggled and pulled my over-the-shoulder straight down. With a single thrust, we were off again. Tonight, she would receive the ride of a lifetime on the living ghost. As I neared the track, my body quivered with power. It shook Claire a bit, startling her. I nodded and roared as I continued along at illegal speeds. Claire was enjoying it, and the words that she had just spoken proved that she wanted to be a coaster. I sped full tilt <gasps> oh! towards Corpse Crew. I glided through the first version, leaping out of it and onto the track sections further ahead. Claire enjoyed every moment. Soon, she would be rolling with me forever. But only if I slayed the beast. It was midnight, and Claire and I lay exhausted from the numerous rounds in the loop. Excerpt 12, in which Railrunner and Thunderbark casually discuss turning Claire into a roller coaster without her consent. Railrunner, you have the power to turn Claire into a roller coaster, I said, finishing his sentence. My mind started to race again. Claire had a chance. She could live. Claire could come to my world, be with me, and have the gift of my own immortality, my own kind! I'm gonna carry that out as soon as possible! I said, a little too wrapped up in my own thoughts. It is a bit more complicated than one would think. There are certain standards to the curse. Oh, what are they? I said, leaning up against an exposed pipe. First of all, Claire has to be willing to give up of being human blood. Remember this. She cannot ever go back. What is done can never be undone. Got it! Second, the curse can only be performed on her dying breath. So, I said, sliding down on the floor. I have to let her suffer before she... I'm afraid so, Railrunner. How do I actually turn her into a roller coaster? Railrunner, you have to bite her. Bite her? I questioned, not sure if I had heard him right. Yes. I thought hard about the fact. It felt so criminal to bite someone so innocent. Or so my girlfriend. I wished that biting her was extraneous. And I had to. I could not... Let Claire squander away. Our love did not have to be forbidden once my tooth pierced her soft skin. I'll do it, Thunderbark! I said at last. Good. I think you will be very happy with your decision later. Now, here are a few things you might want to know. Usually, when a roller coaster bites its victim on their last breath, the human will turn into the exact type and color. 
A red, however, is very different. You get to choose the type of coaster and color. Because as always, there can only be one red. Exactly. Thunderbark said with a big grin across his face. I'm, I'm very glad you told me about this, Thunderbark. I'm happy there is a way. I thanked him. 